Um, just let me introduce myself first a little bit. I, my name is Robert Schulz. After opening up my first law office in Germany in 84, I was the first German lawyer who opened up an office in Moscow in the beginning of 92, so more than 25 years ago. And now I am a licensed and authorized and registered lawyer in Germany and in Russia. Uh, at the same time, I am the main shareholder and, uh, and uh, senior partner and CEO of the Russian law firm uh, Juridical Partnership, Schulze and Brutian, and um, um, the uh, con uh, a law consulting firm, Juridical uh, Consulting Firm Schulze and Brutian. It's an it's a LLC in Russia, OOO. And um, at the same time, my partner and me, we are shareholders of Credit Reform Russia. I guess most people know Credit Reform. As I heard already, not everybody is happy with the people working for me there, so I have to give a little pressure when I go back. <laughs> um, I am member and board member of a lawyer association called ECN, EuroCollectNet. Uh, Member is one lawyer of each European country and of some other important countries in the world, the so-called Club of Friends of ECN. And our main task is debt collection. And finally, I'm the president of an international arbitration court located at the Association of uh, European Business in Moscow. Well, let's first tell, uh, let me tell you a little bit about debt collection in Russia pre-court and court proceedings. Maybe it's uh, surprising for you, but uh, actually there are not too many special points to be mentioned about the debt collection in Russia because it's fairly similar, uh, like it is in Poland or Germany or whatever, um, except some <laughs> special methods of uh, of uh, execution, you know. <laughs> I'll come back to this point a little bit later again. Sorry, I, I always forget this, you know. Uh, um, so, um, once a debt collection firm or a law office has been mandated for collecting debts, it or he will write a, a demand letter, like, just like I do it in Germany as well. And then, you know, setting up a last term for payment. If payment doesn't arrive, or maybe the parties uh, agree about uh, an additional agreement uh, that the debt has to be paid in installments, or maybe is postponed, but even this would not arrive, then the case will be passed over to a law firm and the, law, the lawyer will uh, start legal action at the relevant court. Just a few words about the courts. It's maybe astonishing and surprising again. The courts in Russia are very fast, much faster than in Germany, for example. And let's say corruption, bribery, and things like that went down substantially. 25 years ago, you couldn't win a case without no, you don't have to do it anymore. <laughs> um, at the same time, the Russian, uh, a Russian court proceeding is quite cheap because the court fees are really reasonable and low. The highest court fee, it doesn't matter uh, how, what is the value of the case, is 5,000 USD, which is a lot less than in Germany. In Germany, to have a case of $10 million, uh, it's a fortune to pay, you know, it's unbelievable. Um, the documentation you have to present to court is uh, quite similar to any other country. Maybe you have to present a little bit more because the Russian law and jurisdiction is very formal. I'll come back to that point in a minute. Uh, so you, even if, if the, 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 the seller doesn't de deny that he got the services or the goods, you have to present to the court the bills of lading and, 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 and notes of acceptance and whatever. So maybe a little bit more, but it, it's, it's not a problem actually. 
but there is there's always a but in life, you know. So uh, in this case as well, some point has to be mentioned, and it's kind of substantially. You cannot tell a special percentage of bad debts, but the percentage might be quite high, and there is a special reason for. It is quite usual in, in Russia that companies have been set up and opened just for one or two special deals, excuse my wording, to cheat, to cheat the business partner. So these companies will order services or goods, they will receive it, they will never pay, and they will close the company again. And you will never find a responsible person because these companies have been opened and registered under the names of some old people who don't even know about it, or even under the name of some people who are dead already, who left us already to heaven. So it's impossible to find somebody who is responsible. So you will never recover money or whatever. This is really a problem. And that's why before you start a business or you're going into a contractual situation with a Russian business partner, you should really check him. This is very substantial. And uh, in Russia, you, you get very, very good information from, uh, you know, business information agency. We do the same, Schulz and Brutian or from, from, from uh, credit reform or whatever, done in Backstreet and so on. Um, another important point doing business in Russia is that a contract has to be very precise, very complete, very concrete, because what I said before already, the Russian law and, and jurisdiction is very, very, very formal. So what's not written in the contract more or less doesn't exist. So, you know, terms and regulations about the delivery of goods, the transfer of risk according to INCO terms or whatever, uh, terms of payment, uh, does United Nations purchase law apply or not, the applicable law, Russian, German, Polish, whatever, uh, force majeure clause, uh, very important uh, uh, jurisdiction clause. I'll come back to that point again in a minute, uh, because it's, it's very uh, advisable to agree about the jurisdiction of an international arbitration court. Then force majeure severability clause, clauses about collaterals and its uh, um, execution and realization and so on. This must be in the contract, otherwise you're going to have big problems once you want to go out of, take your rights from the contract. Um, it is very advisable to include a jurisdiction clause about the jurisdiction of an international arbitration court uh, into the contract, not because I'm the president of one of those courts, but uh, because Russia doesn't have treaties with a lot of countries in the world about the legal support and rec recognition and execution of titles of foreign state courts. But the titles and awards of international arbitration courts are worldwide recognizable and executable in Russia as well. And the second point is, these awards of international arbitration courts are final and binding. In Russia, if you go to the state courts, you have four instances, in Germany three, but in Russia even four. So this takes a long time then much longer than the International Arbitration Court. And actually, after four instances, you, you paid the same money like at the International Arbitration Court, but you get your award much faster. Um, talking about Im impacts for credits and uh, collection of money. Well, actually, as I told you, in Russia, it's not very difficult. It's, it's, there could be impacts because of the impact vice versa. I will tell a few words uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, political changes, changes of tax regulations, of currency regulations, things like that. But, well, I don't expect that there will be any problems. And 
may be very surprisable too. It is not difficult, and there are not too many problems, except some very special cases, to take collected money out of, uh, out of Russia to your client. <laughs>